actually a knife is more dangerous than a gun. What? Whenever I pick apart nonsense statements like this, people often question, did anyone ever really say this? In this case though, Rokas from Martial Arts Journey recently asked four self-defense experts, his words, not mine, one of which was me and then three other dudes, and the other three dudes all said that they thought a knife was more dangerous than a gun. What? Obviously, there's a ton of differences between self-defense and, say, murder. But mechanically speaking, they have a lot in common. Whether you're trying to stop someone from strangling you or kidnapping someone you love, or you're just trying to keep people from being alive and having money, if we're choosing a weapon for one of those things or worrying about a weapon that someone has chosen for one of those things, a lot of the considerations are the same. Now, whether we're choosing a weapon or worrying about a weapon, I've always been the kind of guy that likes to say, why not both? There's pros and cons to either. Obviously, one of these things is far better at its job than the other, but people tend to get really upset when you open up boxes with a gun, so why not both? The logistics of carrying and deploying these things is pretty similar, but if you wanna carry both, you're gonna need a good belt, which brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Core Essentials. Core Essentials makes this belt here, and what's great about their everyday carry or tactical belts is, first of all, they look a lot cooler than the other ones, but the buckles, the buckles are the best part. It's got this little tab here, and you know they say you can't push rope. In this case, you can. You can push this to make it tighter, and it ratchets down with this track that's in the back, and then you can just push this to loosen it, which means if you eat a big lunch, you can loosen it, or if you're putting your gear in it and you've got a lot of room, you can put this in there and then push it and it'll ratchet down on your gear. I'm wearing their tactical belt in gray and the X5 buckle, but they have a ton of buckles and the buckles are just cosmetic. They all function the same, so you can swap them out with whatever belt and buckle combination you want. But the belts themselves are really well made without being overly bulky. Bulk is a serious consideration when we're talking about everyday carry, but we can't carry, you know, knives and guns and stuff on those floppy things that come with the cargo shorts that your mom got you from American Eagle. By the way, stop wearing that. Inside this thing is like a this, uh, plastic core. It's, this thing's really, really tough. This was not, I didn't think this part of the review out very thoroughly. It's got this plastic core. It's that. It's that, it's that right there. And see how thin that is, but also how rigid it is. And it doesn't need to be big and thick and heavy, it just needs not to fold in on itself uh, to be useful for everyday carry. The way it adjusts is this track right here. And then this, that, that guy's going nowhere until you push this little jammy that releases it and then it'll slide out. But that's the core belt. This thing is, uh, I've used it in all the tactical type courses I've done, anything about concealed carry, anything with drawing guns and knives, either one, this was the belt I was wearing in all of those courses and all the videos that are about those courses. You probably thought I actually cut my belt when I was doing this part, didn't you? No, uh, this was what I cut off of my belt when I first got it. And they have tons of other everyday carry gear if you're into that sort of thing, which I know that you are, that's why we're here. They've got sunglasses and wallets and keychains and all kinds of little tactical knickknacks. I actually got this knife from them as well with the sheath. So make sure you go check them out. Link's in the description below. But let's get into this whole debate about which is more dangerous, the knife or the gun. First of all, we have to talk about who is saying this. In this particular video that Rokas did at Martial Arts Journey, it was this guy, and he says lots of things. There was this guy, I don't know anything about that dude, but the one that got me was this guy. This is Paul Sharp, and I struggled with this one because Paul Sharp is awesome. I know for a fact that Paul Sharp knows what he's talking about. First off, because I've trained with him in person. Secondly, he is universally respected and highly regarded by everybody that I train under and look up to. So how could someone who definitely knows what they're talking about come up with the idea that knives are more dangerous than guns? The first thing that I wanna talk about is like data or statistics. When it comes to that, you just sort of have to scrutinize where those statistics came from. 
you might do a search for this stuff and find a pro-gun or pro-Second Amendment website. There's an agenda there. But it'll use something like, more deaths are caused by knives. Okay, that doesn't really help us when we're trying to compare the two. And even if it did, you could find just as many statistics that say the opposite because statistics can be manipulated to say whatever the person wants depending on what area of the world or of the country do we pick? What time period do we pick and choose our statistics from? You can make statistics say almost anything you want. But there are some statistics out there about this that do compare the two, and these are the ones that can trip you up. They'll take the number of people that came in with stab or slash wounds from knives, and the number of people that died and get a percentage, and they'll take the number of people that came in with gunshot wounds, and the number of people that died, and they'll get a percentage from that, and then we'll sort of compare those two. And if you don't pay careful attention to what those statistics are actually saying, and that knife death percentage thing is higher, you might conclude that knives are more dangerous. Almost everyone that gets shot goes to the hospital, even if it's a toe. And when they get to the hospital, they're going to know it was a gunshot, whether or not the victim tells them. Then they're going to report that as a gunshot and they're going to call the police. That's all going to happen almost every single time a person gets shot. Everybody that gets cut or stabbed does not go to the hospital, particularly if it's very, very minor. They're not gonna go, or less of them are gonna go. Of, of course, some people go with minor ones. And if you look down in the comments below, I'm sure there's someone sharing some anecdote about a guy that got shot and didn't go to the hospital. But that one is a much, much further outlier than people who get cut or stabbed and don't go to the hospital. A lot of the time, people that get shot with guns or cut and stabbed with knives were doing something that they weren't supposed to be doing. So a lot of times they lie about it. It's much harder to lie about the origins of a gunshot, though people still try, than it is to lie about the origins of a cut or puncture wound. So we can take those statistics and essentially ignore them because we've got a lot of data for the gunshots, but the stabbings and slashings, there's, there's no way of knowing how many cases where someone was stabbed or cut with a knife intentionally and didn't die. But we know, we know for a fact, if you think for four seconds about it, that that statistic is very, very skewed. The last place people get this information and the second to last reason that people say things like this is just they just sort of feel like that it's true. That's, that's where a lot of people get their information. They just feel like knives are more dangerous they because they just want them to be. Maybe they're pro-gun. Maybe they're pro-knife. Maybe they knew a guy who was stabbed. Maybe they've been stabbed. It'll be anecdotal, either their own personal experiences or, you know, the experiences of someone else that they have observed or been familiar with. And admittedly, it might be my experiences and bias that make me say guns are more dangerous. I have wrestled guns away from people. I have wrestled knives away from people. I have faced criminals, violent criminals, armed with both. And when it was a knife, uh, I was chilling. And when it was a gun, I was panicking and afraid for my life. That was my experiences. Now, personal experiences can be valuable. I've had a lot of them, like a lot of them, and they all were very similar. So that's a pretty good uh, pool of data to pull from. But I do have another idea of where these silly ideas come from, but it's mostly a guess. It's just a wild ass guess about why someone who is very smart and sensible and an expert in self-defense might say something like this. I'm gonna save that to the end. If you yourself are just trying to figure out, well, what is more dangerous, a gun or a knife? I have three pretty simple questions that can help you figure this out. Question number one, which one of these things could a five-year-old kill you with? Which one? If I walked into a room and my five-year-old was holding this, I would not be worried. But if she was holding the other one, I'd give her a big old, Okay, baby. Okay. That's, that's question one. Question two is a little less silly. If I said, hey, I've got a door here and you're going to go through that door. And on the other side, there's a man or multiple men who are going to try and kill you. Which one of these things would you like to take through that door? And then the last question is I have two doors. Door number one. There's a guy on the other side with a knife who's going to try and kill you. Door number two, there's a guy on the other side of the door with a gun. He's going to try and kill you. 
Which door are you gonna pick if you had to choose? You would have to be pretty disingenuous to say, oh, you know that five-year-old with a knife could be. Yeah, but the five-year-old with a gun definitely is. You'd have to be really intellectually dishonest to say that you'd rather burst through a door against a guy armed with a gun than a guy armed with a knife. And there's a, and actually I need to address something. You might be giving people the benefit of the doubt and applying a big silent in close quarters thing on the end of that. Like a knife is more dangerous than a gun in close quarters. Cause I don't think that there's anybody stupid or silly enough to think that like at 20 yards that a knife is more dangerous. Though we are on the internet talking about self-defense, so. I don't care if you apply close quarters at the end. Like, I, I, I'm talking at any range, at zero meters. Like, right up against somebody in a wrestling match over the weapon, the knife is not more dangerous by any metric. I've been to classes on weapon retention and in-fight weapons access with the best instructors in the world. Guys who know way more than me about this. I've been to classes specifically for the knife and classes specifically for the gun. Guess what? It's the same class. It's the same principles. It's mechanically accessing your weapon, drawing it. It's, it's all the same. It's like there's little small differences. But it's the same. And now there will of course be down there the a knife doesn't jam. No, a knife doesn't jam. There are pros and cons to either weapon, of course. A knife doesn't jam, but a gun just takes a, a whim and a twitch of a finger to work. It doesn't require nearly as much intent or power or, or just, or, do, you, do you know what it takes to stick? Never mind, that's a different video. It's just silliness and madness to suggest that a knife is more dangerous than a gun outside of an extremely narrow set of circumstances that you handpicked to support your point. Like, what if your eyes are filled with pepper spray and your trigger finger is broken? Or what if you're on a stealth mission and it's sentry removal? Or what if you're wearing one of those energy shields from Dune? Like, you'd have to cook up a scenario where the knife is more dangerous. Now I do have one more reason that I think people who are actual experts would say something as silly as knives are more dangerous than guns. But before I do, I just want to say thank you to Core Essentials. Thank you for the belt. Thank you for sponsoring the video. Make sure you go click that link down below. I, I really enjoy the Core products that I've used. How can a guy who definitely would carry a gun over a knife if given the choice in almost every circumstance, say knives are actually more dangerous than guns. Believe it or not, I got this idea from Jake from Armchair Violence. He did a video on palm strikes and made an interesting observation that martial arts experts just love to know some stuff that regular people don't know. Like, actually you should use palm strikes in a street fight so you don't break your hands. That's, it's kind of nonsense that the whole thing, and Jake does a good job breaking down why it's nonsense. Objectively, the punch is better in almost every way. There's just a narrow set of circumstances where a palm strike would be more useful or just could be useful, period. But, but that's just not an interesting way to phrase things. I think what these self-defense experts would say if they spent a little more time thinking about it and a little more intellectually honest is just say, you know, people don't really realize how dangerous knives are. And because they, they would get the response like, oh yeah, no, for sure. I don't want to get stabbed or cut. Knives are super scary. And they're like, no, 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 dude, you really, you really don't realize. Like I've trained with them and you, you don't realize how fast it can happen. It's people underestimate knives. And the other guy would be like, huh. And it, but that's not like, like nobody's going to click that.